Sports. Glad you can join us here today. I'm Paul Condry. Thanks for hanging out with us here today. Great to have my longtime friend uh, Mark Peterson and the Chesterton Golden Trojans joining us here on the program here today alongside uh, Garrett Lewis and Sebastian Boswell. We've seen these guys play on numerous occasions on regional radio sports. We'll get some thoughts from them. Trojans coming off a five and six season a year ago, three and four in the Doonland Athletic Conference. They open on the road at the Brickyard to take on Paul Condry's alma mater. Go easy on that, Mark Peterson. Go easy on those guys wearing those gold helmets. Got a feeling it's going to be a good one as always. It's going to be a good one. And let's talk about this thing for you. I mean, we've been doing this stuff a long time together. Mm-hmm. Uh, something has to get you excited. Something's got to get the uh, adrenaline and that uh, love of the game of football uh, coming back each and every year. What's it for you? You know, I think the the opportunity to see these guys grow and mature uh, physically, as well as uh, you know, not as just as as uh, uh, you know, young adults, but also as football players. You know, Garrett's had an opportunity uh, sitting with us here at the end there uh, to really be a full time player and starter for us since he was a sophomore. Yeah. You watch him as our low and standalone tailback, and then last year play some tailback, some uh, some slot stuff, and and come off out of that split backfield set. Uh, and so he's had some great experiences, but really the experience of for us as coaches is, is watching these kids grow up physically as well as mentally and and uh, as football players and Sebastian did a great job last year great leader and and did a nice job started out in a backup role at the quarterback position but ended up starting uh, I think three of the last five games four of the last five games and and uh, played in all 10 of them so 11 of them so he did a did a really nice job throughout the season one of the most unique positions you find yourself in Mm -hmm. is this and I think this may be your staff has the most former head coaches I'm going to go on record. Wally McCormick, of course, Terry Chestovich, yep. head coach. Uh, Johnny Tolan, yep. uh, head coach. Robbie Kanye, head coach. So you got yep. five head coaches. And previous to that, you had uh, uh, you, you know, John Snyder with you. So you look at that group. Uh, let's talk about how much easier mm-hmm. it is for you to be able to to you're not coaching coaches right uh, that's the biggest challenge it's been fantastic you know uh, having the opportunity to know all of these guys i mean i've been in the region now for about 31 years and knowing all of these guys for almost that entirety sure. um you know so personal relationships are huge and and have really been so beneficial uh in that regard to you know I, not only do i can i trust these guys i i know they got my back i know we're all on the same page and we're sure. talking about the same things and so you know from a professional perspective I, i've just been incredibly blessed and lucky uh you know with nick bamber in there as well who also just retired uh took another administrative position in the district as a, a one of the uh, middle school athletic directors and stepped down from from our football program but uh just really been wonderful uh overall um it's been a blessing to have so many great coaches and and to get rob back and then be able to bring over terry this uh you know this season and and jt john was with us last year and i uh, had i had an opportunity to work with john when i was at portage as well so it's been a great group of guys got a couple of young guys guys um and uh, Alec Arbasiak, who was also on the uh, Portage staff from last year. Uh, Colton Tuzinski, who played for us on the 2015 team that won the conference championship and made it to the sectional championship again. But he's coaching our wide receivers. And then Kenny Floyd, a uh, young man transplant from Iowa that came, played football at Valpo University and, and joined our staff and has been with us, I think, now for six you, seasons. You think about all the Valpo guy, Valpo you guys mm-hmm. that are coaching football. It's a bunch. It's, it, it's crazy good. Yeah. So before yeah. we talk to Garrett and yep. Sebastian here, respectively, Wow, wow, wow for the Doonland Conference last year. Yeah, yeah. Think you know. about it. State state champion 5A. Yeah. One of the most historic runs for, for VHS. But, you know, everybody in the league uh, just to perform admirably as yeah. well as sensational in many ways. Yeah, really. Uh, you know, and, and I think... You know, for I would say, you know, eight years ago, seven, seven, eight years ago, there, everybody always talked about, ah, uh, you know, the DAC isn't what it used to be, and and I think that's an ebb and a flow. Um, every year, whether whether it's in a conference NCC or if it's the DAC, uh, ultimately there's there's great competition, and and we're always going to play hard. Um, and, and there's some guys in the, in the conference right now. And so, you know, from a, a, a statewide perspective, I, I think we really match up well. You know, Valpo's really got a, a great group, group, a great nucleus back. You know, obviously everybody expects them to contend for a state championship again. And, and Maryville throw them in there. Sure. We, we like to throw ourselves in that conversation because of our experience and our ability to play with folks. So, you know, we get excited about all those uh, those high-level games in the DAC and, and throw in the Hobart, which is, you know, just as high of a level game, and then Warsaw. 
uh, certainly competitive. Uh, some good ones. Garrett Lewis, I remember watching you come on as a sophomore to get some playing. You can, you're about as versatile of a guy offensively. We've seen you play. We've seen you play a little defense as well. Uh, first of all, your thoughts on how summer uh, went and fall camp. Has it gone well? Are you excited and encouraged? I am excited. I think over this, last, over this summer we lost a lot of guys last year. So having these young guys, it was a, it was a little worrying, but I think they all picked it up very well. And I'm excited to see what they can do, and I, I'm just as confident as I was last year. Tell me about uh, this simplest question you'll get all night. We're going to have a great year if this happens. We play together, play as a team. I think and the most important part for us is just to, to be focused. You like the chemistry of this group, Garrett? I do, a lot. Especially okay, so with, with this league, you can't. There's no Friday nights off. Let's let's right. face it. You right. got to bring your A game if you're going to be able to compete. So talk about competing against some of the state's elite teams. Uh, I don't. I'm sure Coach P doesn't have to worry about coming up with some rah-rah speech. All he has to do is uh, uh, show this person's jersey or this person's face up on the screen. Right. Uh, competing. We, we we compete with the best of the best. So. I mean, but we're one of those teams, too, so we know we can't compete, and it's just all about being focused and, and making sure we're ready on every Friday. Okay, let's get some thoughts now from Sebastian Boswell. Sebastian, quarterback. Uh, Sebastian, give us an idea on uh, playing uh, that pivotal role as the leader of your football team. Uh, tell me how well you have uh, grown as the, as the leader of your group. Uh, are you encouraged uh, and uplifted by what you've done in the offseason has made you a better player? So, yes, of course, um, especially in that weight room, all my guys, a lot of younger guys coming up, especially in that whole line, I'm um, getting stronger to dig together as like a whole group and pushing guys in the weight room, which leads onto the field in summer workouts, fall camp, just getting the confidence up, especially like the younger skills that we have, you know, inexperienced guys, first-year starters. I'm really confident. We worked hard this off season on and off the football field, especially, you know, outside of practice, just working on – reps on you know certain um routes for receivers or just running backs get it in you know a lot of like running segments in on the practice field and uh just getting you know i'm um, working a lot with um centers potential centers for this year so it's been really good really good um off season I do, think you, do you think the seven on seven is a good thing for quarterbacks it is it is um just reading defenses, getting better, getting smarter out there, quicker decisions, better decision making. Um, you know, you have to get the ball out quicker, more realistic. That's you know, holding the ball on, holding too too long with the ball in your hands is is the bad part about it. But it's better decision making, just reading defenses, getting you. If you were to tell a, a young and inspiring quarterback that this is something that you need to work on, what would you tell them? Film, watching a lot of film, um, just quick, just just learning what like mistakes you. Uh, you make in a game or in a practice, you know, that, that can make you so much better, you know, just along with getting a lot of reps in. Um, yeah, film film's the biggest thing you can do. I'm going to have Garrett uh, pass his headset over here. Just joining us now is uh, Owen Eden. And, Owen, uh, give me your thoughts on uh, just uh, late to the party here, your defensive end. Give me an idea on uh, is the defense right now at Chesterton ahead of the offense or is the offense ahead of the defense? <laughs> uh that's a hard question to answer just because all of my time is with the defense. You know what I mean? I don't really know. I Like, I couldn't tell you the plays that the offense runs because I'm not part of the offense. Uh, I know that while the defense is working hard, the offense is working just as hard. I don't. I can't say who's doing better. I know that our defense right now is doing really good, especially under um, our new defensive coordinator, Coach McCormick, and I'm really excited about that, and I'm just excited about the season. When, when you look at uh, the growth of uh, Sebastian as a quarterback, and he's going to put your defense in some very vulnerable situations. He's going to make you look bad sometimes, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, th I think we're I think we'll both make each other look bad. Um, and making each other look bad also goes with making each other better. If our defense makes our offense look bad, then that's something that our offense needs to improve on. And if say, vice versa, if they may so make us look bad, then we know what we need to improve on. Well, you guys don't take any time off in the first two games before you get into this brutal Doonland schedule mm -hmm. with Hobart and Warsaw, two of the best coach football teams you're going to see all season. Uh, Bart Curtis is a legend, a Hall of Famer uh, in Indiana in Week 2. And you've got a very talented Hobart group. 
uh, that I'm, uh, you know, Steve McIntyre was on my broadcast team for 27 years as the offensive coordinator over there now. So you got some guys. So let's talk about those first two non-league games. Now I'm not talking about the DAC, but how you stay focused on the non-league games because you don't want to give all give all your secrets away in the first two weeks, right? Well, I mean, oh, of course not. But uh, you know, I think every team says this. Oh, it's a week by week thing. But we've we've been preparing for Hobart and Warsaw since, well, ever since the season started. You know what I mean? Um, there's certain drills we do that are specifically for Warsaw and drills we do that are for Hobart. Our, our goal isn't, oh, let's win these DAC games. Our goal is let's win every game we play. So whatever game that we're up against, we want to win. So if we're against Hobart, we're going to do what we can to beat Hobart. And when we're against Warsaw, we're going to do what we can to beat Warsaw. And then when we're up against the DAC teams, we're going to do everything we can to beat them as well. Sebastian, you you take a look at where your guys are at offensively. We're going to get a thought here from Garrett uh, as well here in our final uh, segment here. So if you'll pass that headset over there, Owen, to Garrett. Uh, you look at the offense matched up against some of the top flight defenses in this league. Is there a particular defense in the Duneland I'm speaking about now that presents more problems than, let's say, another team in the defense? another team in the league so any defense in the DAC is pretty rough and you know other other defensive coordinators switching around different teams um, join different teams it changes a lot of the uh, game plans for certain certain schools but I mean any week is we're focused really focused it's tough any week so we're not gonna just specifically pick one one team where it's like all right we're gonna work extra hard this week because they're much more skilled than another team so we don't look any other team down I, I like to look at it as each team is is, is like a championship game. You know, at, you're playing, you're playing. It's like your last game, last week of practice. But, you know, it's, you got to stay focused. That's what I look at it as. Garrett, I'm going to give you an open-ended question. The Chesterton Trojans are going to have a spectacular year if this happens. What is it? I think we're going to have a spectacular year if we just put everything together, just connect every every puzzle piece. And I think once we get everything going and – you know, the younger guys start getting the feel for what a Friday night's like. We'll figure it out, and we're going to have a great year. Pete, appreciate all you do. Always, Paulie. I appreciate it. Yeah. All you guys. This is everything you've done. I always say it every year. <laughs> I know. You are a, a major component to our success in Indiana football, whether you want to admit it or not. But uh, from us to you, we appreciate everything you guys do, and many, many thanks as always. It's awesome to see you. Yeah, Coach Pete's been one of my favorite people. Him and his beautiful wife of a <laughs> – had a chance to teach my kids back in the day and uh you know back in the long boy I tell you, a lot of water under the bridge i'm so excited for you finally is that your son's going to get a chance to go play some college football how cool is that yeah yeah it's really cool yeah small world uh, full circle you know it comes back he's at valpo so having been there for 13 years and now him to go there unexpectedly we didn't really even anticipate that. It's, it's cool. It's neat. Yeah. It really is. Yep. We're going to take a timeout. Come up. The Portage Indians are on the clock live from Cuban Networks in LaPorta. Special thanks to the Trojans of Chesterton High School. We're going to take a 60-second timeout, and we'll be back with more of our continuing coverage of the 2023 Regional Radio Sports Network Indiana Football Digest Kickoff Classic. We'll return in 60 seconds on WEFM and RRSN.com. <laughs> 